So we're using Quixel's atlases and we need to assign an image to this polygon plane to create something that looks like this. This is just a preview of what the final image will look like. Um, this is the albedo or the, the color map. This is a bump map, um, the displacement map, which it probably won't show. Um, this is a glossiness normal map and opacity as well as roughness and specular and translucency. So we have to put all of these things um, together. I know that Quixel uh, will allow you to, if you have a script, you can like send it from the Quixel bridge right into Maya and it will plug all of those things together, but I haven't got it to work, so we have to do it manually. So I'm just gonna copy this folder and this will work for objects like trees and anything that light passes through it. So let me put this particular um, texture map in here. Close that. So if time permits, I'll, I'll, I can do that with, um, with these two objects as well. But before I assign that kind of plant to this object, I need to convert these paint effects to polygons. Because right now, if we were to render in your render view, I can't see these objects, right? I can't see these objects. I can see this polygon plane, but I can't see that object. So. First things first, select your paint effects tree, which is found under Windows, General Editors, Content Browser, and then you can find any of these trees. Click on it, hold B to make your brush size larger, and then click and drag. All right, so I'll click this geometry, and then under the attribute editor, stroke palm, it says mesh output, change it to output quads. Same thing for that guy, output quads. That's it. Take this object, go to Windows, try modify, convert, paint effects to polygons. And you want to make sure that out quad output is turned on. And I'll increase the poly count to 20,000. Apply. And I didn't lose any sort of geometry on this and now you could see in my render view that I can render that. Same thing with this guy, I might need to increase it more. So let's try 50,000 and then apply and then it pops up. Okay, so the great thing about like, converting paint effects to polygons is that it separates the mesh. So before, uh, let me press Z to undo. Um, it's just one mesh, you see, like the leaves and the trees are combined. And then when we go to the convert, paint effects to polys, it separates the leaves from the actual trunk. And under each one of those leaves, it has its own shader. So you can see here, it has um, this leaf texture and a transparency and all that other good stuff. So what we're going to do with this particular um, polygon plane is the same exact procedure with um, the leaf texture on here. However, we have to um, make sure we can find that leaf texture and that leaf texture is actually found um, underneath Maya's brush images, so it says brush images, bamboos, it's found underneath Maya app content brush images. So I'm going to put that particular file into my source images file. So I'll go to applications, Autodesk, Maya 2018, and then I'll, let's see, 
So the brush images isn't found directly underneath here. If I click on Maya, right mouse click, and then show content packages, I get brush images, and I'll go right into, what is that called? It says bamboo leaves underscore single, okay, so bamboo leaves underscore single tiff. So that's that file. So I'll copy this, copy and put that directly into my folder, my source images, control V, and there it is. Okay. Okay, so uh, first things first, let's assign a material to this object. So let me minimize this. Right mouse click and hold, assign new material. It's going to be Arnold Standard Surface. And I'll rename it to tall underscore grass. All right. And I'm going to open up my Hypershade. So Windows Rendering Editors Hypershade. And most of your <clears throat> windows are going to look like this, like in your Hypershade. It's going to have like the browser and all this other stuff. I just close that out so I have more space to cook up something delicious. So I get this node and I click on that double arrow. Oops, that's what I want. Click here, double arrow, input, output. I call it tall grass. And first things first is to create um, a file map. So I'll press tab in here, type in the word file, and then click texture. Okay. Let me just like, let me make this extremely big. Okay. And then I'll rename this to um, albedo. I'll just call it. You can call it grass texture or albedo. All right, albedo. Okay, and then the next one is going to be another file texture. So I press tab and I'll call this uh, displacement, DISP, and then displacement shader. So I'll put this guy right here. And that node is over here. And we don't need this displacement shader, so I'll just press delete. And then um, displacement shader. And I'll create another tab, call it file, and then texture. This is going to be um, our roughness. And then I'll press tab type in file and file texture. This is going to be our um, opacity. Okay, so first things first, we need to assign these objects to this shader. Okay, our albedo or the color is going to go directly into our object. So let's double click on the albedo. Or we can go into our attribute editor and look for the tall grass. Actually, let me set this project first. So file, set project. I don't have to constantly be looking for my textures in a different project folder. So here we go. Grass wild. There's my albedo and I'll press open. And there it is. I'll click on the out color, drag it to the base color. And then my hyper shade. I'll hold the middle mouse button on my AI tall grass 
drag and drop it to this particular shader. I press six. You can't really see it right now because obviously the UV mapping is is not um, perfect. So if I go to UV, I think I just do like a quick automatic map. Okay, there we go. So that's the grass texture, but again, it looks nothing like this preview image that we're trying to emulate. So where's that? They don't have to fly, source images, grass, wild. So we're trying to get it to look like that. And right now it looks like this. No bueno. So run my PR. Probably should save this. So that's what it looks like in our render view. But it's okay. File, save scene as. I know that like when it's first time doing some things, like you expect the results like right away without maybe like trying to understand the process and that's happens to me a lot. So I'll try my best to explain texturing grass underscore O1. Let's say same as texturing grass underscore O1 and I'll change ASCII to my binary save. Okay, perfect. Alright, so we have that there. Um, the next thing that we need to do is uh, change the uh, put a file to our displacement. So I'll press tab again. I'll type in file. I'll go to the texture. And I need to create a displacement. All right, so I'll click on the out color and drag the out color R to the displacement. And then the displacement to the displacement shader here. And click on those three tabs so you can see that it's being connected. So if I press two on my tall grass shader or three or four, then it goes like that. So I'll just press two for now. I just wanted to show you guys the connection. I'll press four now. So let me find the file for my displacement shader. And that's my, I want to find the EXR file. All right, so the displacement EXR, I'll press open. And I'm just going to cut the albedo right now and change the color to like gray so we could see what the displacement looks like on this geometry. So we kind of minimize this. I'll open up my render view, on old render view. Run an IPR. And right now you can't see any displacement on this geometry, on this surface, because I have to increase the the subdivisions. So the way I'm going to do that, let me minimize my hypershade, is I'm going to go into the render view, so not the render view, but the viewport, click on the geometry, and under every object they have the, like, it says shape, so I go to the Arnold tab, scroll all the way down until we go to subdivisions, change the type to Cat Clark, and then change the iterations from one to a value of, uh, let's try three. And I'm starting to see a little bit of something here. If I zoom in. All right, not a whole lot. 
but let's go into the displacement shader because that's where we're going to get some um, fine tuning. Alright, so this is our network and I'll click on the displacement shader here and we want to let's say increase the this, actually let's go to the Arnold tab turn off auto bump and then we'll change the scalar zero value to 0.5 and then I'll change the scale to value of 5 So just waiting for some sort of results on this surface. And we should see something by now. Let me turn auto bump back on. Okay, there you go. So you can see with these lines on, on here on that geometry that right there is coming from our displacement shader alright so that's actually looking really good now okay so I'm happy with with those results and let's go ahead and turn the the roughness of our of our dis, um, displacement map, I'm sorry, of our specular map. So I'll go here, I'll click on the roughness map, open, and then I'll click on the tall grass, and I'll just middle mouse drag and drop that. Actually, we could just do this. Click on out color, go to specular roughness, actually just click on here, out color R, specular roughness there okay so now it's not so shiny see it's not so shiny okay because yeah, that was kind of bothering me a little bit you couldn't really see the displacement map on there because it was too shiny all right so the next thing that we need to do is um, all right, so I could put the albedo on there. Let's just go ahead and do that. Base color so you could see something. Still not where what we want it to be, but we're getting there. All right. But with this um, roughness, I actually I want to create um, an AI range. So I press tab, type in AI range, and with the roughness, we're going to grab the out out color to input min. I think it has to be the out color R input min. It's not going. Okay. And then the output color R goes into the specular roughness here. Now the values that we're going to change are the input min, something like 0.52, and then the max, um, let's change that to um, 0.84. And then let's try the output min, something like 0.5. Okay. 
Okay. So it's coming along. We we have the displacement, we have the roughness, and now we need to do the opacity. Okay, let's close this. The opacity map is right here. So it's just a, a matte finish, like it's a matte um, or grayscale. So not grayscale, but it's a mask, so black and white. So we're going to mask out everything. Um, so everything that's white, you see everything that's white is going to get the, um, the texture and everything that's black isn't going to get the texture. So we have that there and then we change the the opacity uh, to opacity so we got out alpha let's see out color to opacity <coughs> Let me reload this. Right, maybe it's the out color R to opacity. No? Let's see. What's going on here? Okay, so let me click on the leaf shader and turn off um, opaque. There we go. So I had the opacity right, but um, on the leaf shader itself, the opaque was on, you see? So under that leaf, the plane, there's an Arnold, and then we have to turn off opaque. And so now, this is what you get, right? So this is your, your atlas. Um, we have to add subsurface scattering to it so that we can get the the light going th um, through the through the leaf itself, and that's pretty pretty much it. Um, let's go to that shader, turn on subsurface, change the weight to value of one. Actually, let's change it to. 0.45 and then the scale actually let's turn the type to random walk and then I'll change I'll click on the albedo and make that the surface color and let's see here let's change the radius to like gray Now change the weight to the value of one. So now we actually get light passing through this object. And then if you wanted, you know, obviously you have a really big screen um, scene with, with these objects. There's a way that you can like randomize this and other um, polygon planes so that um, it, it, it randomizes those throughout the scene or you can like manually place it but if you have a huge scene then you could use like mash to randomize this polygon plane in in your scene um, or you can add like more divisions in here and then you could like you can bend it you know you could use those those edges and play with like the the shape of that grass without changing the UVs too much, right? Because you don't want you don't want it to stretch too much. But um, it's just one way of like layering grass so you can duplicate it and then you can rotate it like this, right? So it looks like there are multiple pieces of like grass together in your scene. And then the next tutorial will be. Um, doing that with the leaves. So I hope you guys um, enjoy that tutorial.